We are continuing with our Bible study series in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We got up to verse 9 on previous videos and now we're picking it up again. Let me read to you from verse 10 to verse 16. Paul addresses those who are married. Unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But if, but and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, else were your children unclean. But now are they holy. And if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband, or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? Paul is addressing this very sensitive issue of marriage and relationships. And Paul will be very clear in this chapter that he thinks it would be a good thing for people to be single because he feels they could serve God effectively in single life. But in this section he is addressing a couple. And he says, you're married. Now it says, this is my command, but in fact he says, I believe it is the command of the Lord. Let not the, the, the wife depart from her husband. That word depart really is the idea of separation. He says, if you do separate... You have two options. This is verse 11. Either let her remain unmarried or let her be reconciled to her husband. But he says it really shouldn't be the place that the husband puts away his wife. There shouldn't be any divorce really intended. Uh, it shouldn't be, that shouldn't be the practice of Christians. Christian marriage is for life. And so he says if she departs, she's not really free to remarry, but she should be reconciled to her husband. Now that kind of is in contradiction to Old Testament law because in the New Testament marriage is taught to be an absolutely permanent thing. There are no exceptions, there are no uh, things that come into place which allow the person to divorce as maybe they would have claimed under the teaching of Moses. The Lord Jesus takes us right back to, to, to Adam and Eve and I believe in Matthew the exception is where immorality has taken place before marriage and therefore the marriage was really ineffective. So he says, really, the couple who are Christian that are married, they should remain married. The wife shouldn't depart from her husband. If she does depart, they do separate. She should remain unmarried or be reconciled. And the husband certainly shouldn't put away his wife. But he says to the rest, he says, I I'm going to speak to you now and this is my advice. And I take it that God allowed it to be in scripture because it's what God wants us to understand. So he says to the rest, if a brother has a wife that isn't a Christian, that believes not, and she's pleased to dwell with him, well, don't put her away. There is no requirement where a couple have got married when they were both unsaved and then one of them gets saved for them to separate or be divorced. He says, let her not put away, let a man not put away his wife. Okay, but he says, then let me take you to the other side of the scenario. The woman has a husband that believes not. If he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. So this woman's husband is not a believer, and if he's happy for her to stay, well, she's no reason to leave. This man has a wife who's not a Christian. If she's quite happy to stay, well, don't put her away. And he says, actually, and there's a sense in which, and I do think there's a distinction between Christian marriage and the marriage of a person who's unsaved, because it says here, the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. What he's saying is normally for an unbeliever and a believer to be married would be an unequal yoke and God would not be happy about it. It wouldn't have the sanction of God. It wouldn't be clean in the eyes of God. But he says in the case where one of them has got saved after they got married, if they're prepared to stay and they live together, well, actually God sanctifies. God sets that marriage as a part. There's not that uncleanness or that unequal yoke there would be if a Christian knowingly married an unchristian and, and vice versa. And the result is there's nothing wrong with the children produced from that marriage. Those children are preserved. They're holy in the sense that they're set apart. They come out of a, a marriage that God approves of. Uh, and so he says their children are holy. They're set apart. They have the blessing of God upon those children. Paul says in verse number 15, if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. So if the unbelieving partner decides they can't live within this marriage because their partner's become a Christian, well, he says they're not under bondage. 
He's not talking about what happens after they leave, for he's made it very clear they should either be reconciled or they should remain unmarried. That case doesn't alter whether it's the Christian couple or one of them who's not a Christian. He's not discussing what happens to them afterwards. He says that person, the unbelieving, if they depart, well, let them depart. They're not tied in to stay there if they can't live within that case, he says, because God has called us to peace. It would be God's desire that they stay together. God sanctifies the marriage. He sanctifies the children. But if they cannot live within that situation, then they can depart. But he says, actually, the reality is this. What you would really be looking for is for your partner to get saved, your husband, your wife, your spouse. What knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? And it's not you can save them, but you might be the means of bringing them to salvation. Or do you know, O man, whether you could save your wife? So God's intention, the ideal is a couple stays together. The ideal is God is looking for you to be the means by which your unsaved partner, your unsaved spouse could be brought to Christ for salvation. Now we'll return to this teaching on a further occasion, but I trust that this might be helpful just to deal with those two scenarios where there is a saved couple, both of them saved, and God gives some direction about that. And then when there is a couple who, one of them has got saved, subsequent to their marriage, there is direction given on that. God is a God of order, he's a God of grace, and he's a God who desires that none should perish, that even those who get saved would have the joy of seeing their partner come to Christ for salvation. May God bless you as you watch and think about these truths.